following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Frank Borman and James Lovell are safely aboard the aircraft carrier Wasp at the end of a 14-day, 5,700,000-mile odyssey in space. And the doctors say they couldn't be more pleased with the condition of the flyers and are predicting flights of 30 to 45 days. They say that could be done quite easily. With the recovery of Borman and Lovell, all of the major objectives of the Gemini program were completed. You can get an idea of the rapid, the even dizzying pace at which the American space program is moving by realizing that the Gemini program should be coming to an end within this coming year, 1966, and it will be not followed, but beginning in the same year, 1966, will be the Apollo program. And Apollo's purpose is to put a man on the moon. And as we have been saying, it's even come to the point, coming to the point where it is possible to believe it. Uh, Frank McGee? Yes. Uh, in the 10 months since March, as Dr. Gilruth remarked this morning, in 10 months, the United States has safely put 10 men into space and brought them all back, and no one has suffered so much as a bruised knee so far. The... Uh, Splashdown this morning came at 9.06 Eastern Standard Time uh, when the spacecraft landed at uh, six and six-tenths miles away from its exact predicted impact point. One of the closest, well, the closest so far for the Gemini program. Uh, within um, four minutes, actually, after splashdown, the first helicopter was already over the spacecraft, uh, waiting for the uh, Navy swimmers to jump out and attach the flotation collar. And that is some sort of a record, only four minutes. One of the planes actually spotted the spacecraft with its parachute coming down for the landing in the ocean. And you see it here, as it happened this morning, its flotation collar attached to it, and the astronauts opened the hatch and stood on the collar and then got into a raft and then uh, were lifted by a horse collar device into the helicopter. Now, we don't know which one of them this is, but if tradition held, it would be Lovell, because Borman, as the uh, command pilot, would be the last to leave the spacecraft. So we assume it is Lovell, but it, it could have been Borman. Both of them were lifted up into the helicopter and flown back to the aircraft carrier Wasp, which was no more than about uh, three or four miles away at this point. As we understand it, they landed within six and six-tenths miles of where they were supposed to, but about uh, 10 or 12 miles from the aircraft carrier. Here they are aboard the helicopter. That is Lovell with the heavier beard. Talking to one of the uh, technicians on board. Assistant NASA recovery physician aboard who went out in the helo. And that is Borman, who still has his helmet on. They said they were dirty, but it was good, honest dirt. Hmm? They turned the aircraft carrier around so that the helicopters could come in from the wrong end, really and land so that the doors would open properly for the cameras and the red carpet. And they were safely aboard. Actually, they were aboard the aircraft carrier within 31 minutes after splashdown. Well, Gemini 6 and 7 brought home several records. They did achieve rendezvous. That was a first. There was the turnaround of Gemini 6 in the space of eight days uh, after Gemini 7 had left pad 19. So only eight days later, Gemini 6 was all ready to go, and indeed did go. This was the first time that four men have been in space simultaneously. A new single flight endurance record was established by Gemini 7, 330 hours, 35 minutes, and 20 seconds. A new combined space record for the United States was, of course, of course was established. And it was the first time that two spacecraft flew in formation all the way from about six feet, uh, so it's been indicated, up to about 50 miles. Well, we shall be back after this message from Gulf. 
In the recovery this morning, as you saw, if you were with us, the two flyers elected to be taken out of the spacecraft and carried over to the carrier WASP by way of helicopter, leaving the uh, spacecraft to be picked out of the water and brought aboard later. They didn't want to stay in it any longer than necessary. Having been in it 14 days, it is easy to see why. Gemini 7 command pilot Frank Bowman was asked if he expected to be cramped during his 14-day ride in the spacecraft, and Colonel Bowman obviously had no illusions about it. To deride the comfort of the vehicle that I'm going to spend 14 days in, but, uh, and I hope it's better in zero G. Everybody that's flown say, uh, says it is a lot better than, uh, in zero G. But uh, unfortunately, the, the Gemini, as good a spacecraft as it is in every other respect, is probably the most uncomfortable thing that man could have devised. What's most objectionable? Well, uh, due to the fact that we have ejection seats, when you're sitting in a 1G uh, environment, you're slanted off uh, some 12 degrees, so that you end up with uh, one kidney and, uh, and one buttocks taking all your weight, and we spend as much as 13 or 14 hours in the, in the spacecraft. Of course, the area is also uh, very confined, and uh, I guess the only, even though it's bad in 1G, it's worse on the water. Is, is absolutely the most uh, poorly designed boat I've ever been in. A beautiful spacecraft, but a lousy boat. It really isn't intended to be a boat, and uh, so when it lands in the water, it bounces around, rolls, pitches, tosses. It's hot inside, and so they were most anxious to get out of it. And get out they did. They were brought by helicopter over to the deck of the carrier wasp, which we taped this morning and we're going to play it for you now. Dallas Townsend is the reporter on board the WASP. Now the recovery helicopter, just about crossing the line of the bow on the flight deck, preparing for its descent, and it is over the ship, and in just a matter of seconds, we'll see astronauts Frank Foreman and James Lovell, Jr. home after 14 days in space. Number 56, that's the prime helicopter, that's the one carrying the astronauts. It's being maneuvered into position by the flight deck officer. And touchdown. Astronauts, Frank Lovell. Waving to them through the open window of the helicopter, Dr. Don Stolten, the NASA recovery team leader, with him, Dr. Howard Minners, the chief recovery physician for NASA, and Ben James, the NASA public affairs officer on board. The rotors are stopped, the hatch is coming open, and... The ship's bell sounds welcome aboard. Bearded but walking steadily. A little bit of a rock. Astronauts Lovell and Borman. Frank Borman, the command pilot with less of a beard than his colleague James Lovell Jr. Happy, smiling, their spacesuit somewhat grimy, but nevertheless a magnificent sight as they walk unassisted. Absolutely unassisted. The American flags on the sleeves of their space shoes still glistening. They received a salute from Admiral William Leonard. Captain Gordon Hartley shaking hands. Salute. The ship's fan playing. Thank you. Glad to be here. You don't know how glad we are to be here. Looks like you've been fired. Or He's a better bird than I do. Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best parting license in the world. We're all up there for you. Right on. Ready? Okay. Jim, okay. 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 Here come the astronauts. Here's Frank Borman, still in his flight suit, getting salutes from the Marines along the way, looking in very good condition, smiling, getting salutes from all of the Marines. Has a considerable beard. He's a 
by the fair. Directly behind him is James Lovell, who has a much heavier beard. Lovell patting Foreman on the back. They're smiling, grinning. Lovell saying something to him. They've got their uh, space helmets uh, off the backs of their uh, of their heads. You can still see where their heads have been shaved for uh, the attachment of the uh, various bio sensors. Walking, uh, walking, striding along very freely and easily. Lovell with a heavy beard, Borman with a lighter beard. Smiling, behind them, Dr. Howard Minners, the astronaut's recovery physician, and Ben James, the NASA public affairs officer, and behind them, a large group of Marines, and also Dr. Bill Carpentier, the assistant to Howard Minners, the uh, recovery surgeon. And now they all uh, are bulging down and down into uh, sick bay, escorted by the Marines, ready to begin the start of that physical examination. The Soviets today characterize the flights of Gemini 6 and 7 as a further step in research to perfect group space flights that the Soviet Union itself started in 1962 with the Vostok 3 and 4 flights. The Soviet news agency TASS, scientific commentator, said the American space, uh, space flights also hold great significance for the subsequent development of link-up and docking operations by orbiting spacecraft. The commentator concluded that the four cosmonauts of the Gemini spaceships should be congratulated on a serious achievement in the technique of piloted flights. In other words, the Soviet Union was playing it reasonably straight. The brief but favorable Soviet reaction also was unusually prompt. A few minutes after the two uh, flyers, space flyers, uh, went down below decks, Ben James, NASA public information officer, arrived back topside and gave us a brief report on the fitness of the two men. Ben James, the NASA public affairs officer who has come up from uh, sick bay to give us another progress report on the condition of the astronauts. Ben, what's the latest? Yes, very leisurely I've come up. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't believe it, but everything down there, Dallas, is going very smoothly. Uh, the doctors, as I said before, are still exceptionally happy with their condition. Uh, they, the crew did not take dexedrine on the way down. Uh, their skin is exceptionally clear. Uh, the doctors, as I say, are very happy with the condition. Uh, the only thing that, uh, at all, that I've heard or observed that would be of interest in the medical point of view is that uh, Frank commented, uh, astronaut Borman, that his legs felt a little heavy, but outside of that, and now they feel fine. So outside of that, uh, there just isn't anything in the nature of something negative in medical. He used the word heavy and not weak, is that correct? No, it just felt heavy. But what about their weight, Ben? Have you heard anything about that? I have not heard. Uh, we estimate, although we don't know yet, so it's, it's very difficult to, I mean, don't take this as a, a fact in being, but they estimate that they've lost somewhere normally eight to 10 pounds. We Actually, it's amazing that the two men were able to walk under their own power at all. It's a little difficult to comprehend because actually, if you remained in bed for 14 days and had the privilege of turning about, lying on one side and then the other, taking turns, it's very doubtful whether you could get up and walk across the room. But these fellows seem to, uh, to have no problem. Apparently, the leg exercises that they are taking uh, must explain it. But uh, there should be some stress and strain on the uh, on the other parts uh, of bed, the you, You're going to lie on your stomach. <laughs> That's which right. they can. Here again is a word from Gulf. 